everything is broken. <laughs> everything. As far as I can tell when I look out the window, it's very hard for me to look out the window and not see something that needs to be redesigned or redefined. And I want to walk you through the two biggest things that I think that we need to be thinking about. One is mindset, and the other is our models. Here we go. So, anyone heard this before? Go big or go home? Yeah. So, if you go to any university these days in biz school, the number one question you get asked is, how's that idea going to scale? And I'd like someone to show me where scale has really worked in the world. In Davos, I was sitting at the table with the top three water CEOs, the biggest water companies in the world, with a whole bunch of social entrepreneurs who had water innovations. And we were talking about all of these new solutions that they should be looking at to support with their companies. And one of the CEOs said to me, Vicky, let me explain how it works to you. The average shelf life of a CEO today in the world is three years. In the first two quarters, of my tenure as a CEO, I get to make one bet, and it better be right, and it's a multi-billion dollar bet. So all these little ideas you're talking about, not interested. That's our go big mentality, big problem. 24-7. I was at a conference recently with 350 young entrepreneurs and a very celebrated young 20-year-old tech guy stood up as a keynote and said, how many people here slept less than six hours last night? And all these hands went up. And I'm like, when did it become a badge of honor not to sleep? <laughs> What's with that? But we tell everybody, if you're going to be successful, you have to work 24-7. I think that's BS. We've convinced people to think that money is scarce. We have entire TV programs. Dragon's Den, Shark Tank, where we make entrepreneurs stand in front of a bunch of people with money and perform like caged animals. Shark Tank, really. And I think, in fact, the opposite is true. What's scarce today are great ideas by awesome entrepreneurs, not money. <laughs> Let's move on to the model, our models. The dominant paradigm out there is winner takes all. We put a hero on the cover of every page, every magazine, wherever we go. For those of you who don't know the venture capital model, this is what it is. We make 10 bets, we throw 10 Hail Marys, and we hope one works. And that's success. We're happy with one out of 10. Women would never have created a model like this. Can you imagine having 10 kids and saying, we'll bet it all on Susie? <laughs> really? I don't think so. We've also created a world where 85 people own the same wealth as 3.5 billion people. That's ridiculous. And someone talked about this earlier, Angela. Thank you for the pre-work for this. We have a speculation economy which is 50 times bigger than our value creation economy. Way back when, when we started all of this, people created goods, we bought goods and services, there was value creation. Now, the vast majority of our economy is based on betting on whether something's going to go up or down, creating new derivatives, which crashed the market in 2008 because no one knows what they were doing. They were making stuff up and speculating. And somehow we found $17 trillion to bail out the banks in a matter of weeks. And to give you some perspective on that, $17 trillion would allow us to live without poverty on the planet for 600 years. We found that money in three weeks. It's broken. This is where I think we live. We live in a giant casino. We're betting all over the place. It's completely crazy. And who shows up for this game? It's hard to see this. Bunch of dudes on stage. Sorry to the guys in the room. This was two weeks ago. All white men, except for two. There is actually a woman in this picture, but she's behind the speaker, and that's Kathleen Wynne. She wrote half the check for this $50 million fund, but guess who's in front? Who else shows up for this? This is a conference on diverse perspectives in the world. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so sorry that I have this in my brain, but I see this every day, all day long. It's 
like a giant headline over and over and over. I've gotten tired of posting these things on Facebook. But this is really, there's 117 speakers at this conference, 12 are women. One of the guys actually crashed the Greek economy and he's on the ad, like, hello? <laughs> anyway, this is a conference on policy for women. I'm serious, like these images, I just need to stand here and go click. I actually was talking to my husband and I said, you know, I just want to do a presentation and go, welcome to my world and just go click, click, <laughs> click, click. This is my world. This is something that's cool, it's going around these days. David Hasselhoff, you guys know who David Hasselhoff is, the guy in the circle. So there's a meme going around the web right now because we're all so tired of all male panels, which are everywhere. So this is a little meme, it's a GIF. And it's like, congratulations, another all-male panel. <laughs> so people are even just trying to make a joke about it to get you to notice it. So where are women in all of this? I think we're not showing up to play this game. Someone just wrote a book saying that we all need to lean in and try harder in this game. I'm like, get out, lean out. Women are running, last year, two-thirds of the businesses started in Canada were started by women. 68, yeah, 68 percent of those businesses did not need outside capital. And 73 percent of them are profitable already. We run our businesses like we run our households. I know I'm generalizing, but really, we do. There is financing out there for you to get customers to buy your product. Like, the Canadian government will give them money to buy your product. Would you ever think of going to the government to get someone to be paid to buy your product? Anyone? Any of the women here? I, I, I can't even believe we do stuff like that. We would not buy caviar if we could only afford craft dinner. But the world lives on caviar. Some people do, the 1%. And one of the things I keep hearing is, women are confident enough. We're not bold enough. We should take more risks. I actually think that women have the secret for where we need to go next. The last thing we should do is go join the model that's been created by somebody else. We need to create our own. And someone mentioned this earlier, but one of the biggest challenges for sure is childcare. But has anyone seen this? So instead of fixing childcare, the major tech companies sat in a room and decided that we would pay for you to freeze your eggs so you could stay at your desk longer and be more productive. Oh my God, really? So, good news is coming now. The rest is all good news. There's a perfect storm brewing. I'm sure you can feel it. The largest wealth transfer in history is happening right now for the next 10 years, and women will have 75% of that wealth in their hands. We'll be able to make decisions on what kind of world we want, where we want to put our money. We're also starting businesses at twice the pace of men, and we buy 80% of the products. We can start buying differently. We can start putting our money into different things. And finally, there's a whole new financing regime emerging, crowdfunding. Women are four times as likely to be funded in a crowdfunding campaign than through traditional means. And this, for me, I'm so excited about crowdfunding. This is like microfinance 2.0. It's gonna be really interesting. So, given the perfect storm, this is one of my favorite quotes. And I want you to really just, I'm gonna read this slowly. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model to make the old one obsolete. You can lecture all day long about how it's not working. We need to create a new model and show that there's another way. So as founder of SheEO, we're launching a new campaign, SheEO.world. There's all these new domains, SheEO World. Oh, gosh, there we go. Thousand women, thousand dollars each. It's a million dollars crowdfunded. We're gonna pick 10 ventures run by women that are about new models, new mindsets, and new solutions for a better world. We're not funding more landfill consumption-based companies that the world doesn't need. We're funding good stuff. And the focus of this is radical generosity. Women helping women to start. This is a 20-year initiative. Guys, you'll be able to come in in a couple years, but not right now. <laughs> but it's really radical generosity. The $1,000 is a gift from those women. They're not getting that money back. 
The ventures are gonna get a 0% interest loan that they have to pay back over five years, but what you're really getting if you're one of those companies is a thousand women who are gonna do a full court press to help you succeed. Whatever you need, we're gonna help you with. That's what you sign up for when you put a thousand bucks in. We're gonna take this model and we're gonna move it down to a city level next year. We're gonna do 10 cities. And our goal is to get to a million women at $1,000 each by 2020, which is a billion dollars of capital. It's small, but it's big. There's a lot of stuff that's different about this, but one of the things is it's peer-based. So we've run a, a number of these campaigns before, not at this scale, and the million dollars will be in a pool. The 10 ventures that get selected will actually decide amongst themselves how to divide up the money. And there's only two rules. One is you can't give it all to one venture, no more winner takes all, and you can't divide it up evenly. We've done this twice, and guess what happens? Everybody gets money. And I, when I pushed back on this, because I said, wow, there's you know, a number of ventures here that are farther ahead than others, they said, Vicki, everyone here is amazing. Everyone is going to do something incredible with their life. This might not be the business right now that they have that they're going to fly with, but we all want to work with each other to help each other be great. So, you know, I could talk to other people about this, and they're like, really? Like, what is it, socialism? I'm like, no, it's about, there are models out there where we can all succeed. Win-win, we heard it today. Win-win, 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 win. How about that? So, Insta Network, peer-based radical generosity. I think it's not just about women. It's women and men. But I think it starts with women being radically generous with each other and helping each other and every day thinking about how we can help our sisters succeed. Your invitation is here. Thank you.